What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today I'm going to be comparing the cameras of the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let's get right into it. Up first, we have some photo tests starting with the main 1X camera. In this first shot, the iPhone looks a lot more pleasing to my eye. The reds are more vibrant, there's more contrast, and it looked closer to what it actually looked like in real life. The S24 Ultra looks great too, but it exposed the shot on the brighter side and eliminated contrast, making it look flatter compared to the iPhone. I'm going to give one point to the iPhone for this one. In this next shot, we have my wonderful friend Laren who is modeling for us, and this one is a little harder for me to decide on. We see that the iPhone has a darker and more contrasty exposure with more vibrant reds once again in the lanterns, but I quite like the brighter exposure of our subject, which looks better and is more flattering on skin tones in this case. I'm going to give one point to Samsung for this one. So one of the big differences I'm noticing right off the bat is that the Samsung screen gets significantly brighter when I'm just out and about using it. It's not necessarily that the exposure is brighter, but it just gets so much brighter than the iPhone so I can see more clearly in broad daylight or in any other circumstance. The screen is just prettier to look at, but that's very subjective when it comes to photos. The exposure and the color that you're getting between the two, very different but just the screen on the Samsung is a beauty to look at. Continuing on with the 1X lens test, and we have this nice orange dragon here. The iPhone seems to have leaned a little warmer in this shot, whereas the Samsung went a little cooler in color temperature, and that contributes to the color of the dragon being more vibrant on the iPhone. The iPhone once again is a bit more contrasty, with a slightly darker exposure overall, but what I think is odd is that if you look in the cherry blossoms and background buildings, they are about the same exposure to the iPhone. This is odd to me because even though the Samsung is exposing brighter for the dragon, most other things in the background seem to be exposed very similarly. I'm going to give the iPhone a point for this one since the dragon looks better to me, but it's a very narrow margin. Last shot with the 1X lens and both of these shots look really good here. Side by side, with no labels, I wouldn't be able to tell you which is which. They both look really, really good. The iPhone has a bit more contrast and color in the blue tinted windows, which stands out to me the most. It's so hard to pick a winner on this shot, so I'm going to call this a tie. Right now, the score is 3-2. to two. By default, on this lens, the S24 Ultra is shooting at 12 megapixels, whereas the iPhone is shooting at 24, so it has double the resolution. But the main differences I'm seeing are color, exposure, and contrast. The iPhone definitely exposes more naturally, if not on the darker side, whereas the Samsung tends to expose a lot brighter in order to eliminate shadows and get the most dynamic range out of a shot. And I get that for dynamic range sake, but if you're eliminating shadows and contrast, it just doesn't look good. When they're put side by side, I personally prefer the iPhone photos because they look a little bit less processed and a little bit more natural. I know people tend to like the image that is exposed brighter, but as a professional photographer, I like things being contrasty and dark when they're supposed to be dark. And don't worry about resolution and megapixel count, I'll get to that shortly. Moving on to the ultra wide angle lens, and we have some similar results. I'd say that the color is a bit different on the Samsung. The reds definitely lean a little bit more orange in this shot, whereas the color on the iPhone remains pretty consistent compared to the main camera. To me personally, it looks like the S24 Ultra has less distortion than the iPhone. Lines just look a little bit straighter, and the wideness isn't as exaggerated. I want to give this shot a tie, but because the main subject is the lanterns, the red just look better to me on the iPhone. So by the narrowest of margins, I'm giving this one to the iPhone. Now we have another portrait subject here in this shot with a very exaggerated low angle. Once again we are seeing Samsung lean a little cooler and the iPhone a little warmer, and the Samsung being brighter and less contrasty, and the iPhone being darker and more contrasty. Even though the iPhone looks a little bit more natural and true to life, I'm inclined to give Samsung the point for this one. Right now we stand at 4-3 for the iPhone, but it is such a close battle. Both of these were shot at 12 megapixels, which means there is no resolution disparity between these, and between these two shots I actually think the Samsung looks a little bit sharper, if not a little bit more processed. We are seeing the continued trend of Samsung leaning cooler in color temperature, exposing a little bit brighter, and having less contrast. Moving on to the longest zoom lens on both of these cameras, and right off the bat the iPhone looks better to me. The subject looks brighter, the reds more vibrant, the skin tones just look a little bit better. The iPhone also looks significantly sharper, even though these are the same resolution. Point for the iPhone. This telephoto shot of the lanterns and a flying fish is tough because again I'm inclined to instantly give the iPhone the win for the more pleasing reds, but the Samsung looks sharper, cleaner, and the yellows and golds are just a little bit more vibrant, even if the reds are a bit washed out. And if I lowered the exposure a bit on the Samsung, it looks like a better shot to me. The colors look better, there's more detail, but editing is cheating when we're comparing straight out of camera shots, so I'm going to give this one to the iPhone again. 
Moving on to a tight shot of this dragon head, and this is such a clear win for the iPhone for me. Colors, contrast, vibrancy, it just draws your attention so much better, whereas the Samsung has completely washed out the colors and made everything flat for the sake of dynamic range. The S24 Ultra is definitely sharper, but when the image looks this lifeless, it's hard to give it any sort of win. Another building shot, and this one is tough. Both of them look great, and surprisingly, the Samsung definitely has a darker and more contrasty exposure on this one. And because of that, you can see the better color gradations in the windows on the building. Both shots have great detail in the windows, and I think it really comes down to personal preference of color for this one. I know what this building looked like in real life, so I would say the iPhone captured a little bit more natural looking shot, but I'm gonna give this shot a tie. Last shot on the 5X lens and we are back to expected results. The Samsung is exposed brighter and has a more vibrant color to the main subject in this shot, the tram. The blue is definitely more eye-catching to my eye. Colors look a little bit more muted but more true to life on the iPhone. The iPhone showed what a grey day it was whereas the Samsung made it look a bit better than real life. When we zoom in we can see that the Samsung also has more detail and I can read the text in the S24 Ultra photo better. This one is so tough for me but I think I have no choice but to give this one to the S24 Ultra by the small smallest of margins. Moving on to portrait mode, and this one is tough. I love both of these shots for different reasons. We have a longer lens on the Samsung, which just makes the subject pop more with more separation from the background, but even with a slightly wider focal length, the iPhone has great subject separation and background blur. To my eye, when I pixel peep, the iPhone looks to have slightly more photorealistic bokeh, whereas the Samsung's blur is more Gaussian than optical looking. That being said, the skin tones on the S24 Ultra look better. The edge detection is amazing on both these cameras, and I cannot pick a winner. This one's a tie. On to macro mode. At first glance, my eye is drawn to the iPhone shot. Colors are richer and more vibrant, the exposure is better, and things are sharper with less noise and better background blur. I can see far more detail in the skin of the orange, the little divots, the dirt, and the color. The iPhone is going to take the win on this one for me. On to the selfie camera, and again, this is another win for the iPhone. Skin tones look a lot more natural and pleasing, my orange jacket is far closer to what it looks like in real life, and these colors look better overall. Let's talk resolution real quick. The iPhone iPhone by default on the wide lens now shoots at 24 megapixels and 12 megapixels on the rest of the lenses, whereas the Samsung by default shoots at 12 megapixels, but has the capability to go to 50 or 200 megapixels depending on the lens. If you do enable ProRAW on the iPhone, that does unlock the capability to shoot 48 megapixels on the main wide camera. However, that locks you in to 48 megapixels and the rest of the lenses are still shooting at 12 megapixels. The 12 megapixel shots of the S24 Ultra compete perfectly fine with the 24 megapixels of the iPhone, I have no problem there, but what did surprise me is the 50 megapixel shots out of the Samsung. They look noticeably worse. Using the exact same lens in the 50 megapixel mode, the color and exposure changes drastically and not for the better. Even though you get more resolution, it feels like a downgrade in many ways and I don't think the trade-offs are worth it. And then let's talk about the 200 megapixel sensor. This thing is absolutely insane and the fact that it's on a phone is mind-blowing. However, I would never shoot on this mode unless the situation really called for it. Unless you find yourself in a beautiful landscape with lots of light, you're probably not going to be using this 200 megapixel sensor because it doesn't perform as well as the 12 megapixel mode. So I would keep the Samsung in the default 12 megapixel mode for the best overall performance. Both these phones are capable of shooting raw DNG files, which means if you're like me and you like to edit your photos, you get the most latitude possible to work with without breaking your image. If you like getting the most out of your images, check out my presets. If you're coming from this video, I have a little 10% discount for you over the next two weeks, just as a little thank you for getting this far into the video. As we move on to video, I shot an entire comparison between the S24 Ultra and a professional cinema camera, and if you want to see the results of that video, be sure to click up in the top right corner. Now onto the video comparison. The Samsung looks natural, nice, even exposure, vibrant colors but not overtly so, and it doesn't look overly processed compared to the iPhone. I can honestly say I prefer the video coming from the Samsung in this shot. This shot of oncoming traffic looks better on the iPhone at first glance, colors are better, exposure looks better, it has a character and you feel like you're there. But then watch the Samsung Samsung auto lower its exposure. Things get a lot closer. I still prefer the look of the iPhone, but it's not a huge difference. Also what I notice is that the lights in the center of the video are flickering on the iPhone, whereas they aren't on the Samsung. The iPhone still takes this one. Moving on to the 5X camera, and we see the trend from the photo realm ring true in video as well. The Samsung is brighter, less contrasty, and my eye prefers the colors and exposure of the iPhone. However, I will say that Samsung seems to have better stabilization at this 5X focal length. More in-depth stabilization 
stabilization tests coming shortly, but this shot goes to the iPhone. On to some stabilization tests. Starting with the ultra wide, and oh man, I was not expecting this. The Samsung camera looks noticeably more stable, like I'm using a gimbal. I was not ninja walking or trying to be steady, I was really just walking normally and seeing how much shake the cameras could handle, and I was not expecting the Samsung to look this smooth. The wide lens looks pretty stable too, but man, the Samsung just does a better job of stabilizing the footage. The iPhone is definitely showing more shake. The 5X lens is pretty well stabilized on both cameras here, but I think the Samsung wins this one again. The overall smoothness just looks better on the Samsung. The iPhone shows a little bit more of those micro jitters that the Samsung just doesn't. On to the action stabilization modes. Starting with the ultra wide angle lens, both cameras crop in on the image pretty heavily, so you're getting a tighter view and a lower resolution. The Samsung crops a little tighter than the iPhone and loses a little bit more resolution, so it is noisier and the image doesn't look as good, but it definitely has superior stabilization. On the wide lens, the S24 Ultra image improves in quality, but the iPhone still looks better to my eye. However, the Samsung once again wins in terms of stabilization. Honestly, I was surprised how good the Samsung stabilization was, especially in the normal modes. It beats the iPhone hands down, no competition. And it looks like I'm using a gimbal when I was just shakily holding it one-handed and not attempting to get smooth footage. I was walking all over the place like crazy, and it looks so smooth. So we are out here, we are celebrating Chinese New Year, and this is what the audio sounds like from both devices. I will be simultaneously switching back between the iPhone as well as the Samsung, so you can hear the difference back and forth. You can decide which one sounds better, and I will tell you my results in post, because I have no idea what it currently sounds like, but this is a good test of audio, because this is a pretty real life situation of what you can expect and how they reject noise equally. In my opinion, in this test, the iPhone just sounded a little bit more natural and pleasing and did a better job of isolating my voice. However, audio is something that's very subjective because everyone's voice is different and the mic picks it up differently. But I'm gonna give this one to the iPhone. Moving on to portrait mode, and this is just not one of my favorite modes. On the One X lens, you can see the edge detection completely misses Laren's ears on the Samsung, and both phones blur quite a bit of his hair when they shouldn't be. The iPhone looks slightly more spherical with its out of focus areas, whereas the Samsung looks just a little bit more fake. On the longer lens, the focal length looks a little bit better for portrait mode and more believable, but edge detection still isn't great. The Samsung looks significantly noisier. The blur on the iPhone looks a little bit better. Overall, the cinematic portrait modes of both these phones are nowhere near what a professional camera actually looks like and to me don't look that good. I would avoid using these modes unless you had the most ideal of lighting and background circumstances. I am impressed that this mode exists at all but there's just so much post-processing going on in real time and that's why it's so hard to get this mode looking good. When you're in photo mode and it's taking one single frame it looks amazing but when you do that at 30 frames per second in 4k doing all that computational stuff it's bound to have issues, and we're still at the beginning of this kind of computational videography movement. Moving on to slow motion, and we have 4K 60 on both cameras. I'd say I prefer the look of the iPhone, but they are both really solid. Tie. This is where the Samsung has a huge advantage. The iPhone is still locked into 1080p for higher frame rates, whereas the Samsung can shoot 4K 120, which is why this image looks so much better. Easy win for the Samsung on 120 FPS. And then comes super slow motion 240 FPS, and both of these do not look good, both being 1080 and really bad 1080 at that, but as you can notice, these videos are not in sync. And that is because the Apple file has a mind of its own and doesn't actually shoot a constant 240 FPS. It modifies it, so Samsung gets the win for actually shooting the advertised frame rate, even though neither of them look great in this mode. Now I want to just talk about some quality of life things, the UI and UX. The Samsung wins this hands down. The iPhone has got to have one of the worst UIs for choosing what you want. If all you want to do is push one single button, sure, the iPhone is great. But as a professional, Samsung's interface is amazing. Not only can you choose how many megapixels you want your shot to be for any given focal length, but you have more manual control in both photo and video. You can choose what resolution you want your video to be, you can choose what frame rate you want your video to be, and you can choose the aspect ratio you want your video to be. All within the same app. The iPhone, on the other hand, is a nightmare. If you want to change resolution, you have to cycle between HD and 4K in the top right corner. And if you want to change your frame rate, you need to cycle through four different frame rates and God forbid you accidentally tap a little bit too fast and have to cycle through it a second time. And then if you want to enable certain features like Pro Raw, for example, you can't even do that in the iPhone app. You have to go to a whole separate app 
to enable those features. You have to go to the settings app, you have to go to camera settings, and then you can enable and disable things through a awful menu system. It is such a pain that you can't just do all of that within the camera app and that you need to go to a different app to enable or disable settings. Samsung gets a massive win in that department. And then because of that brighter screen that is just so much more visible outdoors, I'm gonna give another win to Samsung. And then on top of that, the S24 Ultra has an additional lens. The iPhone has three lenses, the Samsung has four. And then on top of that, you have 8K as well as additional frame rate modes that are just not available on the iPhone. So, another win to Samsung. So after putting both phones through their paces and running my tests, the final result is, drum roll please, 17 to 18 for Samsung. And as insanely close as that score is, I don't think it's reflective of how good and how close these cameras are in real life. In previous years, the iPhone was the clear winner and known to be the best for both photo and video. Now Samsung trades blows with the iPhone, giving it a severe beatdown in certain categories. The times that the iPhone wins, it's barely eking out a win or it's more of a subjective win, whereas when the Samsung wins, it is a noticeable victory that is not even close. I don't think anyone is switching ecosystems based on year-on-year -year camera upgrades between companies, but I do think Apple should be put on notice that there are a lot of features that some of these other phones have that they are lacking and they need to up their game if they want to compete. But everyone can rest assured that they have an amazing camera in their pocket. Which phone do you think has the better camera? Let me know in the comment section down below. Go fight. Tell me how wrong I am. My name is Mark Steiner and I will see you next time.